I just invested £1,500 of my own money into cloth and got started and I had to pretend to the guys who were helping me that I knew what I was doing when I didn't really. I was kind of only a few paces ahead of them but don't tell them. And then just in faith I hoped that people would come to help and we put out on social media and through our church mouse and through other church pew sheets and Radio Jackie and all kinds of places wherever I could to get people to come and sew. I was worried about my daughter who's a junior doctor and whether or not she would have scrubs because she'd already identified that they were short of scrubs in the hospital and with an infectious disease you really need to have some levels of protective clothing. And she'd said to me that oh, it's all right because she was at Kingston and they have plenty of money in the trust and there'd be no problem. But I knew that scrubs were made in China and also North Africa, uh, coupled with Brexit and importing duties and all those sorts of things, plus the fact that China was probably going to be sick. I thought there isn't going to be the manufacturing that there usually is. And also it's a global market. So I identified that we were in trouble knowing that nothing was made in this country. So I thought we need to get cracking and uh, I'd taken the design that I had made for Genevieve um, and then I did a lot of consultation so I really looked at the design, what everybody wanted, they wanted a higher v-neck because they didn't want chest hair showing and they didn't want to have to wear a camisole underneath because they're too hot and they wanted set in sleeves and how many pockets they wanted and I asked things like how many pages they carried at any time so how big the pockets really needed to be and where they wanted them and I gave them what they asked for so they've got drawstrings on the trousers for example that are on the outside of the garment so no one had to touch skin to be able to drop them the pockets on the trousers hold an iPhone sideways, but they've got quite a small pocket, a handhold, so that if they have to put a locker key in, they didn't lose it. Um, and the sides of the tops have got a split in them, so that for longer and shorter people, they don't decant everything out of their pockets when they sit down. I was very, very, very bored. I live on my own. Um, and it was great to find a nice place doing something useful. And the fact that people were being asked to to work incredible hours in the NHS and in care homes and so on without proper care and equipment and yes okay sorry. <laughs> other volunteers come and they go there's no pressure on anybody about what they sew and we give them everything they need I wanted to make sure that like a gift the kits are wrapped very thoughtfully they have the size labels we help them with their sewing machines we got a retired taxi driver who will deliver to people who can't come in um, and we pick up and drop to them. Since last October I've been coming in one or two days a week and you know however much or however little people do their role is equally as important because it's the sum of the parts um, and all ably guided and encouraged by the fantastic Rosie who you know this place wouldn't happen without her so yeah a real real sense of having done something good. I only come once a fortnight for a, for a morning, um, but it still feels like it's worth doing because if we all do little bits, then um, collectively an enormous amount gets done. It's a really good engagement of community and need and putting people together with what's needed. Sure, my name is Rosie Taylor-Davies and I'm the founder of The Scrubbery.